In this video, we're going to go over some examples dealing with the midpoint rule. So let's begin. So let's say if we have the graph y equals x squared, and let's graph it. So it looks something like this. We're just going to focus on the right side of this graph. Now, let's determine the area under the curve from 0 to 8. Let's see if we can estimate it using the midpoint rule. And we're going to break it into four subintervals. To calculate the length of each subinterval, you can use this formula. Delta x is b minus a divided by n. So we want to find the area over the closed interval from 0 to 8. So a is 0, b is 8. So 8 minus 0 divided by 4 is 2. So the length of each subinterval is 2. So that's delta x. By the way, before watching this video, I recommend watching my other video on Riemann sums, left endpoints and right endpoints, and you could find it in my new calculus a video playlist, or you could search it in YouTube. So let's continue. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw four rectangles using the midpoint rule. And you need to draw the rectangles starting from the midpoint of 0 and 2, which is here, and the midpoint of 2 and 4, which is 3, the midpoint of 4 and 6, that's 5, and the midpoint of 6 and 8, that's 7. So we're going to draw a rectangle where the line intersects that point. So a portion of the rectangle will be outside of the curve, and a portion of it will be inside or within the curve. So the midpoint rule, it calculates the area of those four rectangles, and it approximates the area under the curve from 0 to 8. Now as you can see, there's some parts that has not been accounted for in white, and also there's some parts that have been, that shouldn't be accounted for, also in white. And so the midpoint rule is a good approximation for estimating the area under the curve compared to the area using the left endpoints and the right endpoints. To calculate the area of each rectangle, we need to multiply the width of the rectangle, which is delta x, times the height of each rectangle which is the y value that corresponds to a certain x value, or you could say that's basically f of x at some sample point x, or x sub i. The area is going to be the width, which is the same for each rectangle, times the height of all the rectangles. So we're going to sum up the individual heights for each rectangle, starting from 1, to some value n. Now n is 4 in this example because it's 4 rectangles. What we need to do is create a number line. So going from a to b, 0 to 8, and there's 4 subintervals. This is the first subinterval, this is the second one, the third, and the fourth one. Now, if you were to calculate the area using the left endpoints, we need to choose 4 out of the 5 points listed. So that would be 0, 2, 4, and 6. For an increase in function, that would be an under approximation or a lower sum. If we were to calculate the area using the right endpoints, we would use 2, 4, 6, and 8. So this would lead to an over approximation or an upper sum for this example. But using the midpoint rule, we're going to get the points in the middle of each subinterval. So that's going to be at 1, 3, 5, and 7. So the area is going to be delta x times the sum of all of those, the heights of the rectangles. So it's going to be at 1, and 3, 5, and 7. So it's the midpoint of each subinterval. 
Now we know that delta x is 2. And f of 1, we know that f of x is x squared for this example. So this can be 1 squared, which is 1. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25. And this is supposed to be a 7. I don't know why I put a 6 here. 7 squared is 49. So first, let's add 1 and 49. 1 plus 49, that's going to be 50. And then 9 plus 25 is 34. 50 plus 34 is 84. And 2 times 84 is 168. So this is the area using the midpoint rule. Let's see how close we are to the actual answer. So to calculate the actual answer, the exact area under the curve is simply equal to the definite integral evaluated over that interval. So it's going to be from 0 to 8 x squared dx. The antiderivative of x squared using the power rule, it's x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 8. So this is going to be 8 to the third over 3 minus 0 to the third over 3. 8 to the third is 512. And 512 divided by 3 is 170.67. So as you can see, the midpoint rule is a good approximation of the actual area under the curve. Now let's try another example. Let's say we have the function x to the third. And I want you to estimate the area under the curve over the closed interval 0 to 10. And choose five rectangles. You can break down that interval into five sub-intervals. So go ahead and use the midpoint rule first. And then calculate the definite integral from 0 to 10 to see if the answers are close to each other. So let's start with a graph. So x cubed has a similar shape as x squared. The only difference is it rises faster. So we need to calculate the area of the shaded region. So let's start with the midpoint rule. So let's create a number line from 0 to 10. And let's calculate delta x. So delta x is going to be b minus a over n. a is 0, b is 10. So this is going to be 10 minus 0 divided by 5, which is 2. So these numbers will differ by 2. Now, to use the midpoint rule, we need to get the midpoint of each subinterval. So that's at 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So the area is going to equal delta x times the sum of f of x at these different values, going from 1 to 5. So we're going to have five values because n is 5. Now delta x, we calculate it to be 2. And then this is going to be times f of 1 plus f of 3. And then f of 5 plus f of 7 plus f of 9. Now f of x is x cubed. So this is going to be 1 to the third power, which is 1. 3 to the third power, that's 27. 5 cubed, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And then 7 to the third power, that's 343. And then 9 raised to the third power is 729. So go ahead and plug those numbers in your calculator. 1 plus 27 plus 125 plus 343 plus 729. That's 1225. If you multiply that by 2, 
This is 2450. So that's the area using the midpoint rule. That's the approximation for the area under the curve. Now let's get the actual area by calculating the definite integral of x cubed from 0 to 10. So the antiderivative of x raised to the third power is going to be x to the fourth power divided by 4. So this is going to be 10 to the fourth power over 4 minus 0 to the fourth power over 4. If we multiply 10, 10 I mean 4 times, 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000 times another 10, that's going to be 10,000. So it's 1 with 4 zeros. And 10,000 divided by 4 is 2,500. And so 2,450 and 2,500, they're pretty close to each other. They're not too far apart. And so as you can see, the midpoint rule is a very good approximation of the area under the curve. You could use it to estimate the value of a definite integral.